today's lesson is um, <clears throat> lesson 11.1, square roots and irrational numbers. Please get out your notebook and start taking notes on this page here. A perfect square is the main, um, one of the main terms we're going to look at in this section, and it's the square of an integer. These are all the perfect squares that you need to know. So if we take the integer 1 and we square it, we get 1. If we take the integer 2 and square it, we get 4. 3 squared is 9. 4, whoops, that's a squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, and 12 squared is 144. You should have all of those perfect squares memorized. When you take the square root, it's the opposite of squaring a number. And this is the square root radical symbol right here. So make sure that you get that all in your notes. And then we'll go over a few examples of um, square roots. So, if you need to copy this down, press pause, otherwise we're going to go on. So simplify each square root. So if we look back at our table that you have in your notes, what is the square root of 64? The square root of 64, 64 is a perfect square, so the square root of 64 is 8. What's the square root of 121? The square root of 121 is 11, but we have to remember that negative sign on the outside so the square, it's really the opposite of the square root of 121, which would be negative 11. So here are four problems. I want you to pause the video and try those on your own. Okay, so let's see what you got. The square root of 100 is 10. The opposite of the square root of 100 is negative 10. The square root of um, 16 is 4. And the opposite of the square root of 16 is negative 4. If you have any questions, jot them down and you can bring those to class um, tomorrow. Next thing we're going to talk about is estimating square roots. When the integer is not a perfect square, you'll have to estimate its square root. So here are the steps. You're going to determine which two perfect squares the integer is in between. You decide which perfect square it is closer to, it is closer to, and then um, the square root of the closest perfect square is the estimate. So for example, the square root of 8 is not a perfect square. So if we look at a number line, the square root of 4 is equal to 2, and the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So the square root of 8 is going to be somewhere in here. It's in between the square root of 4 and the square root of 8, or 9, but it's much closer to the square root of 8. So we estimate it to the nearest integer. So the square root of 8 is approximately equal to 3 if we round it to the nearest integer. So estimating to the nearest integer, let's see what um, these square roots are. So I'll do the first two with you, and then I want you to try the last two on your own. So if we think about the square root of 27, what two perfect squares is 27 in between? Well, we have the square root of 25, and we have the square root of 36. So the square root of 25 we know is 5, and the square root of 36 we know is 6. So when we look at the square root of 27, is that closer to the square root of 25 or the square root of 36? And we know that it's only 2 away from the square root of 25. So um, the square root of 27 to the nearest integer is going to be approximately 5. Now when we look at the square, it's the opposite of the square root of 72. So we know that the answer is going to be negative. What is the square root of 72 closest to? So it's in between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. 
Ooh, now this is a little trickier. What is it closer to? We might have to do some subtraction here. So 72 minus 64 is 8. And 81 minus 72 is 9. So it's a little bit closer to 64. Um, so the approximate answer is going to be negative 8 because the square root of 64 is equal to 8 and the square root of 91 is equal to 9. So it's a little bit closer to negative 8. Why don't you guys try um, the next two on your own and then um, we'll come back and work those out together. All right, so let's see what you got for the square root of 50. It is approximately equal to, we know it's in between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49. And, whoa, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. It's in between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. And it's much closer to the square root of 9, or 49, which is 7. So that means that this answer would be approximately 7. And then what is the opposite of the square root of 22? So this would be approximately equal to negative. And we have the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. And 22, uh, the square root of 22 is closer to the square root of 25. So that means the answer would be negative 5. Okay, the next two terms that we're going to talk about are rational and irrational numbers. If you want to copy down these definitions in your notes, that would be great. Um, rational numbers can be expressed as a fraction, A over B, or in a decimal form, a rational number terminates or repeats. So it's going to be a decimal that ends or a repeating decimal. That's what um, terminate means. And then repeats, you know what that means. Irrational numbers in a decimal form, it neither terminates nor repeats. Irrational numbers go on forever and ever and ever and never repeat. Probably the perfect example that you guys know is pi. Um, Any time that you have a square root that is not a perfect square, so square roots that are not perfect squares are also irrational. So not perfect squares are irrational. So for example, the square root of 18, 18 is not a perfect square, so this number is irrational. The square root of 121 is rational. 432.8, the decimal terminates or ends, so this would be a rational number. This here, we have um, 0.1212, and notice how the 1212 repeats, so it's a repeating decimal, so that would make this rational. Now, if we look at letter E, we have 120, 120, so we think, ooh, this is repeating, but then we look at the next numbers, and it's 012. This part does not repeat, so that makes it an irrational number. And pi never ends, so that is an irrational number. Here are four problems I'd like you to um, try on your own. So pause the computer, and then when you're, you're finished, come on back and we'll check what you got. Okay, the square root of 2 is irrational because 2 is not a perfect square. The opposite of the square root of 81 is a rational number because the square root of 81 is 9. 53 hundredths is a terminating decimal or it ends, so that's a rational number. And the square root of 42, 42 is not a perfect square, which would make that an irrational number. Well, that is all for today's lesson. Jot down any questions that you have and bring them to class tomorrow.